What's going on, guys? Today, we are recapping the NFL Week 5 in the context of fantasy football. Lots of big wins and losses in both the league and in my fantasy football leagues this week. So let's jump straight in and see who are the big winners and the big losers. Before we get into anything else, let's come ahead and have a look at... We're five weeks in now. Let's have a look at the standings. That's what I want. So, in the Andy Dalton fan club, we are a two-division league. Um, I still don't know how that actually affects things. It doesn't seem to affect player positions like I thought it did, but it is what it is. Um, so, in Division 1, um, you've got Pash in first place with a 4-1 and one record, losing his first game of the season this week. James is up to 4-1 and one on a four-win streak after losing in Week 1. Huge for him. Um, you've got Skip, who is three and two, um, bouncing back from a loss last week to get back onto a winning record. Love to see that from him. Fraser drops to two and three, and then Anchor having a torrid time, former double champion. Um, one and four, one and four, torrid, torrid time. Um, and then in the division two. We've got Scott leading the pack 3-2 three and two on a three-win streak. Very, very close this week, but we'll get into that later. Um, I'm up to 3-2. and two. I've got my win. I'm back, I'm, I've righted the course slightly, um, and we're going to hope to continue that. Dad, despite having to change a lot of his roster this week to uh, avoid um, injuries and bye weeks, uh, managed to get the win still, and he continues to 3-2. and two. Tom drops to two and three off his loss. And Ryan, who almost won his first game of the week this week, drops to 0 and 5. You really hate to see it. Um, but let's go ahead and get into some games. Boom. So I won this week. I was up against Tom. 19 points is a bit closer than it should have been because he was missing, I believe, two players. Simple bot score. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, so he was missing Christian McCaffrey and Malik Neighbors and still managed to break 100 points. So he'll be very happy with that result, I'm sure, or performance. Um, but it wasn't enough to deal with me. Baker Mayfield absolutely balled out, fortunately. Uh, Josh Jacobs, really good week. Uh, James Cook, after a poor debut for me, bounced back. Wide receiver call was poor this week, only netting a total of 12 points. Um, I'm just going to put it down to an off week for them. I'm not too worried. Cole Komet finally got a tight end to his dog shit. Uh, six points. We love that. Bijan Robinson might have been the only player in that Falcons-Tampa Bay game to not pop off other than Godwin. Godwin and Bijan Robinson are the only two receivers running backs in that game who didn't pop off, and I happen to have them both. It's crazy. Us. Um, Seabert, the uh, Washington kicker match, nine points for me. Very happy with that. And the Seahawks defense, despite it sitting pretty at 28 points for a little while there, um, dropped down to 12 in the end. Still pretty solid from my defense. Um, and I didn't leave too many points on the bench yet. I played the two wrong wide receivers um, in hindsight. That would have been 30 points compared to 12. So it would have been 18 more points there. That was the only mistake I made. Um, I think on the actual surface, maybe playing Higgins instead of Godwin would have been a better decision. But I don't think playing Godwin was a bad decision when Higgins is still ramping up after coming back from injury. Um, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, we managed to get Cooper Cup off the waiver wire as Dad dropped him as a result of trying to balance his team so that he could compete this week. So we're very happy to welcome him in. He's on a bye week in week six and he's expected to be back for week seven. So he could find himself in the roster soon and we might use some of the extra wide receiver room we've got here to... Um, trade for a big upgrade somewhere um the big the big danger on, t on tom's team was kyle murray 33 points Derek Kemry always scary with 20 points there having a quiet game by his standards for the last few weeks nothing special for murray cooper one of the better tight ends in the league in ferguson travis etm pretty poor week aubrey pretty solid game and the 49ers defense a pretty solid game despite losing um you look at my team, I'd have said I won by more than 19 points, but the numbers don't lie. But I'm happy with that, and it's good to catch a dub. 
Next up, we have Dad vs. Anchor, a game that for a little while was close, for a little while was not very close, and then ended up being a pretty comfortable win thanks to Lamar Jackson. 40 points in that win over the Bengals in OT. Um, four passing touchdowns, 350 air yards, 55 rushing yards. Insane performance from him. Everyone else did their part. No one scored lower than five, which is actually always quite nice to see. Brian Thomas absolutely balled out with 24 points. Everyone else on a little bit on the low side. Obviously, Dowd had a pretty good game on Monday Night Football. A bit on the low side from your other running backs and wide receivers, but... It's not too bad. He will no doubt be right about Jake Moody being doubtful for the coming weeks. Um, and he might want to look for a better defense next week. But hey, he did enough. And there were no points left on the bench. Look at this. Devonta Adams didn't play. Singletree didn't play. Bye week, bye week, bye week. Um, only his, his only other player on the bench who could have played was Brock Purdy with 15 points. And that would have lost him the game. Would he have still won with Brock Purdy? 15, 26, take off essentially flat 25 points. He would have lost with Brock Purdy. So the only change he could have made would have been a change that would have lost him the game. Um, but yeah, he did lose some good value in losing Cooper Cup to the wave of wires, potentially. But he won his game and that's all he'll care about. Um, over on Anchor's team, it kind of all went wrong other than Brock Bowers. Cowboys defense finally had a good week. Um, but yeah, three points from your flex, 20 points from your wide receivers, sub 20 points from your running back duo, sub 20 points from your quarterback all in the same week is, it's never ideal. Um, and she needs to work out what she's going to do going forward because there wasn't really any points left on the bench. What she could have had an extra six points playing Eckler instead of Brees Hall. But it's not like Eckler's the smart money choice when he's the secondary Washington back, which I think says a lot. Um, but yeah, there were no other points out there. Yeah. You are looking at Anchor's team going, where are the points coming from? She's got, on paper, a really good tight end room, but Laporte's had a pretty poor season so far. Maybe she's a trade target, but again, who do I want? Maybe I'll try and go and get Bowers. Brock Bowers has been, I believe, the number one ranked tight end, but he's been very good regardless. Maybe I'll go get him and give her some other weapons um, because if she doesn't start winning games soon, she's very much in danger of not making the playoffs. Next up, the Monday Night Football Decider in which James came out on top over Fraser. So Fraser had, going into Monday Night Football, Patrick Mahomes left and he was down... Um, 25 points essentially 23 points I think we worked out uh, meaning that if Pat Mahomes scored more than 23 points James was cooked fortunately Pat Mahomes did not um, in the win over New Orleans so James does get his win again Joe Burrow has saved James here Brian Robinson very respectable 15 points Aaron Jones got hurt in the first quarter not a lot you can do about that Juwan Jennings nada Smith and Jeeba it's okay but not a whole lot there. Kincaid, pretty poor. Um, Aduze, pretty poor. Evan McPherson, pretty poor for his standards, especially having missed a 50 yarder. That would an extra six points in our league. Broncos defense came in huge. Um, now let's look at the team who ran in within two points. Pat Mahomes, cool. Most up finally had a good game at 15 points after um, Achan went out early hurt. Kenneth Walker, you'd have expected more than nine points from him. Tyreek Hill starting to get up there again. He's finally broke 50 receiving yards for the first time since um, Tua got hurt. Um, Nico Collins getting hurt when he did probably saved him because um, Jerry had already done some damage, but if he'd have played the whole game, he might have been scoring 25-plus points. Um, no t tight end massively saved him. Drake London and... Young Way Koo's performance in Thursday Night Football really put him on the back foot off the rip. Um, but it wasn't enough. And then no defense. But let's have a look what he could have done to win the game. If Swift or Hubbard would have started over either of his running backs, he would have won the game, I believe. He lost by 2.23. Um, Hubbard outscored... Okay, so Hubbard in for most wouldn't have won in the game. 
Um, but I mean, even even Friar Muthin would have won in the game. But basically, any change would have won him the game, um, which just shows that it's important to check your lineups, folks. But there we go. James advances to four on one um, after losing week one. He will be smug as fuck. Next up, Pash loses his first game of the season. Um, his O has gone. There are no um, lossless teams in the league, um, which is, I mean, it's good for competition, but I didn't expect it to happen this week because I believe based on projections, it was expected to be pretty one-sided. Let's see uh, what changed. Jane Daniels, 24 points. Weirdly, I think that's actually one of his lower games this season, which just shows how well he's been playing. Shard White and Mason only combining for 20 points on the nose. Metcalf, only three points. There you go. That's going to hurt you. Uh, Shahid back in the scoring zone. McBride, six points. Pretty solid. Pickens, pretty poor from him. Kaimi Fairbairn, 18 points. You love that from your kicker. Saints defense, nine points. Not too bad. However, Bears defense with a huge 25 points. Butker with 12 points doesn't hurt. Pittman having a good week at 10 points. Oh, baby. Travis Kelsey, back-to-back, -back, plus seven-point weeks. And now I've dropped him, eight points. Ayuk finally balling out, 16 points. Jefferson, bit of a slow week, but still, 9.6. Najee Harris, 11 points. So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty close across the board. The big difference maker is the Metcalf to Jefferson and Pickens to Pittman. Each of them have kind of won by seven points, and that makes up half the difference there, and then the rest of it is the defensive difference. Um, but were any huge mistakes made? Um, McGoughlin, 18 points as a kicker would have been the same as Fairbairn. Wicks wouldn't have been an improvement. So yeah, Pash has put out his best roster here. Um, Kirk Cousins, 44 points would have been a big upgrade for um, Skip. <laughs> And he could have had more points in one of his wide receiver slots. But you are never, ever, ever benching Justin Jefferson. So it's not a bad decision at all. Um, but yeah, there we go. Pash wins. He basically plays the perfect roster. I don't think it was insane to take Shroud over Kirk Cousins. Um, and it's just common sense that Justin Jefferson has to start. So it makes complete sense. I think in the end, both teams basically played the perfect lineup. That's the way the cookie crumbles. But this is the blockbuster game of the week right here. Hold on to your fucking horses, ladies and gentlemen. Do you see what I see? 84.85 plays 84.80. Oh my God. And ladies and gentlemen, look at this gap in the line here as well. Up until Monday Night Football... Scott was down 40-ish points, 36 points, I think it was, um, with only Alvin Kamara, who only scored 10 points, and Kareem Hunt to play. Which put him in a good spot, because Kamara's been balling out. I, if you would have told me beforehand, though, that it was going to be Kareem Hunt doing the heavy lifting, I would have laughed in your face. So let's see what happened here. Sam Donald in the Wembley game with a monumental stinker. Still enough to um, get Rob Salah fired, apparently, but a monumental stinker in their win over the Jets. 3.61. Oh, no, 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 no. Debo Samuel didn't even manage three points. His kicker, zero points. He made a PAT and missed a PAT, but the big one. The Ravens' defence cost him four points. He would have been better off not playing a defence. How insane is that? Um, Kyron Williams, pretty good game. Kamara, pretty poor. But if you say Kamara was the flex instead, 10 points from your flex, you're pretty happy with that. But let's look at what he was playing against here. Jordan Love, Connor. A-Chan went out in the first or early in the second quarter. Garrett Wilson, Puka Nakua on IR. Devonta Smith on a bye week. He didn't play against three players, essentially. And he was run within 0.05 insane but should it have been that close no it shouldn't look at this man's bench stevenson 19 points evans 19 points jamar chase 39.8 nearly 200 yards and two scores that is diabolical now i know what you're saying okay let's look at the common sense here 
Debo and Reed both do not start above Jamar Chase. One of them definitely has to be kicked out for Jamar Chase. Um, I'd argue that Mike Evans should basically start every week as well. He does have a pretty strong receiving core, so maybe Evans falling by the wayside isn't as big an issue. And I know it ended up winning him the game, but starting Kareem Hunt over Jamar Chase and Mike Evans is insanity. Yes, hindsight says it was the right decision because it won him the game. I mean, starting Jamar Chase would have won him more comfortably, but that is an insane decision on paper. I can't believe he's got away with that. Um, Kareem Hunt out here saving this man's job, potentially. Otherwise, he would have fallen to 2-3, and three, as well as given Ryan his first win of the season. Um, so, no doubt, um, Scott needs to tighten up next week. Jalen Hurts will be back. I imagine Jamar Chase is going to be starting every week going forward. He's going to have a fun decision to make regarding Stevenson because it doesn't seem like he's the number one running back anymore. But he's definitely not not involved. Um, but with Kyron Williams and Kamara, do you risk that? Is he going to keep running with Kareem Hunt now that he's had one big game? Is that going to burn him? Does he need to reassess his kicker situation with his kicker doing nothing? Um, he has already dropped the Ravens defense, which I absolutely understand. Um, but that is it in the Andy Dalton fan club this week. So um, let's move over to the Ghoulie 12 League. And here we are. We have another 2-0 and o week, ladies and gentlemen. We won both our games in both our leagues. This game was a lot closer. We can say that with absolute certainty. But let's dive into the numbers and see what happened here. Um, CJ Stroud, 16 points. Happy with that. Najee and Robinson, um, Bijan Robinson that is, combining for just less than 20 points isn't ideal, but the wide receiver room balled out this week. Nico Collins, Brian Thomas, and Mike Evans. If Nico Collins wouldn't have got hurt, he probably would have been upscoring around as much as these dudes as well. Absolute insane from me this week. I was really happy I managed to land Brian Thomas off the waivers, uh, and it's paid dividends. Finally, in this league, broke my curse of playing the wrong tight end, I believe, every week. So, Fryer move started with nine points. Moody scored eight points before getting hurt. I'm going to have to remedy that. And the Seahawks defense casually scoring me 10 points. Um, Geno Smith caused me problems. Quarren Williams and Brees Hall outscored my running backs a little bit. Um, Kittle was a big problem, outscoring Fryer move by 11 points. But that just wasn't enough alongside his wide receivers and flex to undo the damage here, um, as well as McPherson and the Cowboys seceding eight points to me there. I mean, that is the difference right there. Kicker and defences win games, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just an old adage in the real world. Um, ironically, though, I didn't play my best lineup. I could have played Pierce instead of Collins for an extra seven points, but I think we can all agree that would have been insane. Um, I don't think there was any points left on the bench over here. Oh, no, there was. He could have played Gay instead of McPherson, and that would have won him the game. If he'd have played Matt Gay instead of Evan McPherson, he would have won the game by 0.4. He has got to be livid at that. Um, you, do, you truly hate to see it. Moving on. Mr. 2-0 gang rise up, Josh Locke. Um... Friend of the channel. He's on a three-game losing streak, ladies and gentlemen. We put him on Fraud Watch, I believe, after his first loss. Is he lucky to not be um, following the way of Robert Salah and be losing his job here? If he wasn't the owner, do we think he'd still be head coach? What do we reckon? Because he's been decimated three weeks in a row now. Um, it was Cam's turn this week. 39 points he dropped on his head top. A uh, 39 point victory, that is. So let's see what went wrong. Dak Prescott, 16 points, not too bad. Zach Moss, 8 points, not ideal. A Chan, who obviously got hurt early in that game, not even 3 points, oof. Tyreek Kill, a little bit better at 12 point, uh, 13 points. Worthy, 12 points, not bad. McBride, 11 points, not bad. Robinson, 13 points, not bad. Will Lutz, 12 points. Pretty damn good. Broncos defense, 16 points. It's not a bad score. 105 will win a decent amount of games, I feel. Um, and it's not like he really left anything on his bench. He could have had more points if he'd have played Johnson over Irish running backs. It wouldn't have made a difference, though. 
when you've got Baker Mayfield with nearly 25 points, running backs combining for 23, wide receiver room combining for 28, 33 from the flex of Drake London. His kicker didn't even win with 12 points. Um, and the Bears defense only scored two points less than the Broncos. This was just a complete everyone turned up and balled out on the same day. 144 points is a phenomenal score. There's really nothing you can do about it. Um, only 17 points on his bench because of injuries and bye weeks. So he played his best lineup. Um, oh, no, we're going to talk about your game, Ian. Um, but yeah, absolutely diabolical from Josh and he is well and truly on fraud watch if he wasn't the owner I think he would have been fired next up we've got Tony versus Mick um handy win for Tony let's have a look at the numbers Lamar Jackson there we go that's the big difference maker I feel in a lot of leagues this week with his insane game Derek Kemry is a cheat code at the minute Dordle also did really well in Monday Night Football you love to see it Almost burnt by John Jennings and Jalen Waddle. He's probably a little bit worried about that wide receiver room at the minute. Um, Ferguson. Tell you what, Baltimore and Dallas have saved his ass this week. Big, big time. Um, other than that, nothing special. What about on the other side over here? Garrett Wilson almost caused him some trouble. But yeah, you've got Bucky Irving not scoring enough. Saka not scoring enough. The kicker not scoring enough. Defense not scoring enough. It's just, it's, it's, it's fine margins. It's only 18 points, so we're not massively surprised. Did anyone fuck up? Um, McGoughlin, you wouldn't expect to start. Love over Jackson, you absolutely don't start. Um, Parkinson over Ferguson, it would have been the wrong decision. No, as far as I'm concerned, he's not really left any points on the bench. He technically could have moved Robinson into a wide receiver slot and had McGoughlin in his flex instead of Jennings for an extra nine points. Um, but that wouldn't have necessarily been the most logical thing to do. Um, he's only up there because he got a touchdown, which massively boosted his numbers. Um, let's let's see what Mix did though. Overall, not too bad. Did he leave any obvious points on the bench? Most of it wasn't obvious points. Foreman, not really obvious points. And Joku didn't really score any points. Coram didn't really score. Any... No, there was nothing left on this bench. Technically, there was, but I don't think he made a poor decision by not starting most of. Um, over Irving so it's just one of the ones where you've got to chalk up and go again that's very unfortunate for Mick he dropped to two and three next up Ian versus Luke very close score here isn't it um, would the people of the chat like to see something this is Ian atting Jonesy at Three minutes to three on Sunday, mocking him for not updating his roster. Because Luke was at the game on Sunday in London. He assumed Luke wouldn't be able to um, deal with the situation and remedy it. We see how that went for Ian. Oh, look, Ian lost by 1.5 points. That that's really That's really embarrassing, isn't it? Because, look... He managed to swap out the players who were on bye weeks and injured to replace them with actual players like Adunze and Lockett. Lockett who scored 11 points. He was also hoping for a Pat Mahomes miracle on Monday like Fraser was. Didn't do enough. So that's what you get, chat. If you take if you test the beast, you get punished for it. This is absolute karma for waiting until the the eleventh hour when you thought the person wouldn't be able to do anything about it and mocking them for fucking their roster and then getting burnt for it. Because let's be clear, that was not a friendly reminder to go, oh, don't forget to take your team. He made it clear that he spotted a couple of days beforehand and hoped Luke wouldn't update it, but he just wanted to flex that the roster was fucked a little too early and he got punished for it um that is what we call an absolute w result um luke is now i believe four and one no three and two they're both three and two as a result of this game um but ian will be ruining that if he misses out on playoffs by a singular win i'm sure um let's move on to the next game oh everyone everyone in the chat can we get a fuck wag chant going on 
Um, absolute scenes. Wag lost again. He got absolutely dumpstered. Let's see what went wrong for Wag, shall we? Oh, this might, this, this quickly become my favourite segment of the week. Um, Sam Donald, four points. Sam Donald will have fucked a lot of people this week. Justice Hill, three and a half. Mason, poor week for Mason, 8.8. Wondell Robinson, 16 points isn't bad. Pickens, not very good. Kincaid, not very good. Myers, not bad. Aubrey, not bad. Vikings defense, not bad. 82 points. When all, when one, two, three, four of your six like receiving positions of running back, wide receiver, tight end, and flex, when four out of them six don't even break ten points, and the other two don't break twenty, you are always in trouble. It's just a matter of fact. Every single time, uh, and then we look on the flip side: eighteen points for Cream Hunt, seventeen for Cook, twenty-seven for DJ Moore. Alave, three points. A little bit poor. Doesn't matter, though. Craft, 24 points. Absolute huge game out of the tight end. Brandon Ayuk in at flex with 22 points. Greg Deleg, five points. Commander's defense, 13. Everyone turned up. What, you've had one poor performance, Chris Alave. Um, you could have had Shahid instead for an extra 15 points. Wag was lucky to not have double his score dropped on his head top. Um... Let's all laugh at Wag now because, yeah, Kyler Murray on the bench who scored 24 points. He could have broken 100, which would have been a lot less embarrassing, but he didn't. Also had Tank Bigsby, 25 points on his bench. That's more than his two running backs and his flex combined near his damn it. Fuck Wag. Absolutely hilarious. We love to see Wag take L's. He drops to 2-3 and three and long may it continue. Big up Joss for the rising to 3-2. and two. And then to finish it off, another pretty handy beat. And what's that? Three teams scored 140 plus this week. Oof. Making Ian the lowest scoring, uh, the second lowest scoring team of the week. Insane. Um, Oscar falls to one and four. I can't help but feel like Oscar's been really unlucky. Everyone seems to have massive games against him. And this week is no different. George of 148 points. Let's see where these points came in. Joe Burrow, huge game. Connor, 14. Jacob, 60. Jamal Chase, having that double jip of Joe Burrow and Jamal Chase this week is diabolical, by the way. Diabolical. 75 points between the two of them. The damage is done at that point. The damage is done at that point. 75 points from two players. And then you kick a score in 16 as well. It's craziness. As well as Kyle Pitts having you know, 106 points from four players and one of them is your kicker. That's, that's insanity. 113 points would have beaten what? One, two, three, four, five teams this week. It would have beat just over half the league. Uh, just under half the league. And instead he's been beaten by 35 points. Rough. Rough, rough, rough. I don't think anyone's been particularly stinky here. You just didn't have the X factor. Basically, everyone broke 10 points, having your tight end kicker and your defense. Um, yeah, you hate to see it. Wasn't really, I mean, T Higgins over Flowers would have been the only like logical one to make. Um, and even then, that would only net an extra 10 points. Because you, you're not dropping CD Lamb. Between Pittman and Flowers, you're going to play Pittman every time. Um, so yeah, I don't really think there was anything else you could have done here. Um, and diabolically, is that right? George could have had an extra six, uh, an extra one point there, and an extra ten ish with Smith. So what? He could have had an extra what eleven points. He could have been scoring one sixty as well. Holy God, some big, big scores this week. Um, but let's go ahead and have a look at the overall standings. What, what, what? How do I get to them? League. Da, 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 da. Uh, overall. And here we have the overall standings for the Ghoulie 12 League. We have um, no defeat and no wins, which I believe is Joss in first. Uh, no, Joss is hooked to. I can't remember who no defeat and no wins is. But yeah, lots of three and two teams. Um, in fact, seven three and two teams. Um, I am in fourth with my points scored and everything else. I'm pretty happy with that. I think I've had like some of the most points scored against me. I'm right up there. Yeah, I've had the third most points scored against me and I've still managed to um, win three and two here. Everyone else who's... I mean, 
there's no one else who scored near my amount of points who has a winning record, which shows that my team is doing doing something here. I've scored the fourth most points, which is why I'm in fourth of all these teams tied. Um, Ian has fallen... Oh, Ian is the lowest scoring team. He's lucky to even have a winning record. Um, Ian is unfortunately the clown of the week this week. Um, he drops down to seventh. I believe top eight get playoffs um, in our league. So Ian is still in a playoff spot. Wag and Joss and Josh, sorry, are both big, big trouble here. Two lost streak, three lost streak. They're going to be panicking. Josh, one of only two players not to have broken 500 points yet. He is going to start panicking soon, and I cannot wait for it. Um, but that is everything from the NFL recap this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.